All right, Jenny, I wanted to explain this to you because it's a little bit difficult to understand. I don't know if I'm going to have enough time to show you. So this uh, sheet, I'm going to send it to you. It's called Propagation Tray. Uh, I'll send it to you right now before I forget. Uh, you can edit it. Um, this sheet, this first sheet, I usually copy and I give every student a copy of this. And this is what the students are going to make observations of their pepper trays with. And how they do that is after they, when they plant them, they're going to um, write down the names of the peppers that are in, that are going to go into each row. And then as a plant will germinate and start to grow, I would have them draw a little tiny plant in that corresponding square on their sheet. So this is a digital one. And then um, this actually shows examples of like when we planted, how we planted them, what temperature we set them at, uh, which ones germinated, when they germinated, um, and what kind of things to look for on making observations for germination. And then eventually they'll figure out and calculate their germination rate of like how many seeds were planted versus how many seeds actually grew, because uh, that's important. Old seeds don't germinate as well. And then um, what I did was these next two slides, I printed off um, like strips. I cut them into strips and then each table, like table one got tray one. And then those are the peppers that seeds that they got and then um so like example tray one is going to have two rows of jalapenos a row of habaneros a row of serranos a row of anaheim and they need to label each of those rows or else they're going to get them all confused when they plant them and sell them um and then uh, there's another video that kind of shows how i do this with tomatoes so that should help you with the um, how to explain how to do the peppers uh, but the students are responsible for how to do this and so they really need to make sure that um, this is sideways by the way so say they write the pepper name here so say it's jalapeno whatever um, and then they're going to plant one two three four five six seeds going across only in that row of that type of tomato. And so that is how I make sure that there's a good mixture of different kinds of um, peppers that are grown in the greenhouse. And you'll see like towards the end are a whole bunch of like um, milder peppers, like bell peppers and snacking peppers and that sort of thing. And then this is how I figure out, and this sells really well the way that I have it here is I do four trays of 128, the 128 trays. And um, I'll do three, like for example, tray one, I'll do three rows of sun gold, two rows of yellow pear. Like this whole tray was cherry tomatoes, which are really popular, different kinds of cherries. And then the next tray mostly is like sauce tomatoes, like the ones you can with. And then these are all like yellow or weird looking ones. And these are pretty common uh, larger tomatoes that people use for slicing. Uh, but I usually have students that I really trust doing these. Um, and there's a video kind of showing how I do that. And then um, I don't know how much time I have left. Uh, this shows that I plant um, four trays of flowers. So these are really popular and they sell really well too. So zinnias. So I do the dwarf zinnias and then I do the large zinnias. And then um, one of these that I grew was really ugly and I didn't like it, these medium gold ones. I grew them and they're ugly. Um, and then I do two trays of marigolds because marigolds are really, really popular. Um, and then the marigolds get planted into these four packs that we have in the planting shed uh, space for pots. And then the zinnias, I, at first I was growing them and putting them in six packs, but they sold a lot better if you put them in single forage pots. Um, and we made a lot of money off of them. And uh, ones that got left over, I donated after the plant sale, I donated it to a flower farm that I knew could use them or a community garden. Um, and so that is how uh, I organize my biggest sellers for the things that people ask for the most. Um, if you're wondering about the herbs, uh, there should be a inventory. 
somewhere. And this goes through with like how much, how many peppers we had at the end, but it also, let me see if I can move this. Oh no, you're in the way, dude. Uh, herbs. So it tells you like we had a ton of herbs, but we had a lot left over too. So um, you might want to just take a look at the total that were sold um, because we've had way too much left over. Um, and it tells you like the things that sell well. I'll share this with you. Hopefully you have it in your race. Nope, you do have it. Jenny Cookendall. Um, and it has little tabs on the bottom. So um, I'm sending you a whole bunch of like a sequence order of stuff and then links. And this planting calendar should be in the interactive science notebook. And it's the most up to date and like the best one of when to plant everything. And then there's a whole bunch of videos on some of these links that I made back when we we're during COVID um, that will help you uh, guide you and you can show those to the students too. But my favorite videos were um, this guy, Gary Polarchik or whatever. He's like, his channel is called like The Rustic Gardener. And I, this video is in that email too. And um, I would watch the video and then have the potting soil ready and then have the students plant the herb seeds exactly how the video is showing. So anyways, I think that's it. Email me with questions.